And welcome back to our special online bonus uh, edition. We call it Lively Extra when 30 minutes is not enough. Let's reset the panel. Joe Powers, Antonia Farzan, and David Salvatore. Uh, Antonia, uh, I was interested this week's primary, presidential primary. It's like, was there a presidential primary this week? Low turnout. But what happened in Rhode Island is happening across the country. A good percentage, 16 percent, voted uncommitted for Joe Biden. What do you read into that? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely the most notable thing to come out what was otherwise a very boring primary, um, especially when you look at Providence. It was something like 30 percent. And I think that's pretty significant, especially when you consider this was not a particularly well-organized campaign to get people to vote uncommitted. I say that with no disrespect to the organizers, but it really came together at the last minute. I mean, the press conference it's announced this was happening was four days before. So I think a lot of people didn't even know it was happening, had maybe just kind of learned about it from the national media. Nikki Haley got 10% here, probably not a surprise. Um, the question always is, Joe, when people say in the primary, I'm, I'm going to sit this out, do they come home or do they stay home in the general election? And that's, a lot, that's what happened to a lot of people that, that led to President Trump getting, re -elect, getting elected in 2016. A lot of those 2012 voters sat out. So mm -hmm. as you look toward November, what are you thinking nationally? Well, I mean, it's it's my job, our job at the at the GOP, as it is with the Dems as well, is to get as many people out to vote as possible. And, uh, you know, we're coming up with every opportunity we can to try to figure out a way to entice people to do it. And and I guess the phone calls that we all get, com people complaining about this, that, and the other, um, they really fall on deaf ears. I think sometimes people just want to be the squeaky wheel and they're not willing to make the change. It's going to be up to us to really get people to focus on if you want to make some sort of a change, if you want to make sure that your person gets in, you want to be able to protect your seats that you already have, you got to get out and vote. And if you don't go and do it, you really have only one person to blame. However, on the backside of that, it's an empty threat because there's really nothing that's going to happen to them until a year or two later when they start seeing the economy doing what it needs to do. And now they start complaining again. And then by the time their election comes around, they just fall off. And it's just we got to get them back out there. And it was a very low uh, turnout as far as the primary is concerned. I think it had a lot to do with the fact that people were like, well, you know, Trump's going to get in and Biden's going to get in. And that's where it's going to be. I'll just leave it alone and call me in November. Well, we're definitely calling you in November because we're going to get you out to make sure you're there. David? I think Democrats will come home. I think there will be a strong push not only at the national level but here in Rhode Island where the Democratic Party is very organized. It has a strong gr uh, ground game. Uh, and look, th there is a lot of pressure uh, to ensure that Donald Trump does not get elected to a second term. Uh, so I do firmly believe that Democrats will come out in November. Uh, there are some local races to consider in the city of Providence. We're talking about a school board election. So for the first that time. For the first time. Yeah. So an elected school board could generate uh, more activity. But again, I'm confident that the Democratic Party will uh, do what they have to do to get their ground game uh, just as effective at it, as it has been in the past. Yeah, and in terms of the uncommitted vote, you do have some Democrats who are saying, you know, people who vote uncommitted who, who are saying, yeah, of course I'll vote for Biden in general. This was just to send a message. I think you also have a lot of people who maybe will sit it out and be unmotivated, given that Rhode Island is a safe blue state. You know, we're not going to be a Pennsylvania. We're not going to be a key swing state. Um, but I think it'll definitely be interesting to see over time um, what you're talking about with the school board, with those local elections, how did those drive turnout? Especially because for this past election, I don't think the Rhode Island Democratic Party really did a lot to try and get people out to vote for Biden, at least not anything I was aware of. So when you do have a more concerted push in November, do things start to look different? There was a lot of talk in 2020 about Gen Z, Gen X, millennials, that really kind of helped. There was a concerted effort to, to have them come out in 2020. And I wonder what the vibe now is. I mean, you can't buy a house. Interest rates are high. It costs you half a paycheck to go to the grocery store, all of that. Does that encourage you to vote or does that, and I know you don't speak for all of those three demographics, or does that make you apathetic and think no matter what I do, it's going to be this way? I think it does make a lot of people apathetic. Yeah, absolutely. It's sad to say. Yeah, I, I firmly believe there's going to be a huge groundswell as far as Republicans coming out, because right now, and, and, and David may think it's going to go on the Democrat side, but to avoid Donald Trump being in, but there's no doubting that 
the economy was 10 times better when Donald Trump was in place. And I think that's where everybody's focus is. People aren't sitting here worrying about these emotional football conversations that they're having. They're sitting at their kitchen table trying to figure out how they're going to pay for bread that has gone up 94%, and how they're going to pay for eggs, how they're going to pay for the kids to get back and forth in school. How can they afford Ripta because they can't afford the Ubers anymore or anything? The economy right now is really what I think is going to drive. It's our job to make sure that people are, are aware of this because there has to be a change. We can't, this is not sustainable. But didn't the the Republicans misjudge the midterms about where abortion fit in. I mean, I understand economy, and I'm right there when I when I have to spend a lot more. Gas is, you know, you can argue gas, it goes up, it goes down. But now it's going to be on the ballot in Florida, mm -hmm. which is a key battleground state. You now have a Supreme Court that talked about the six weeks, the 15, but it's up to the states, what you talked about, mm -hmm. states' rights. Didn't the Republicans misjudge that? You thought it was going to be the big red wave in the midterms? And it didn't well, materialize. They missed. They definitely misjudged it, and I think it was because they got sucked up into the emotional football. And what I mean by that is, like, whenever somebody wants to create emotion from people, they'll bring up those those topics, such as abortion. And quite frankly, the Democrats don't even talk about abortion anymore. They they changed the name of it just to try and make it seem like there was more of an impact on an individual's, uh, you know, health concerns and health rights. Quite frankly, abortion really doesn't really shouldn't even play a role in any of this because it's it's just the, the political emotional football that gets kicked down the line. Take a look at two, two, uh, in, in the year 20 in the year 2000. There was over 5000 uh, uh, abortions that happened in the state of Rhode Island. As of 2021, there was 1500. So there's not even like the numbers have even gone down. There's not even like a real call for it anymore. But that's going to be the emotional football that comes out. And it's our job to keep people on track of what's really going to affect Rhode Island moving forward. And abortion isn't it. It's going to be the economy. Without question, the economy is horrible right now. It's proof positive that everything that goes on in the state of Rhode Island has just been a complete failure as far as the leadership is concerned. Because now that the economy is so bad, you're seeing rises in prices on things that could have been fixed years ago, but they kept pushing it down the line. The bridges, the bike paths, and the money that they're spending, now everything is double and triple in the cost. It's going to see from the political side right down to the, the kitchen table, which is everybody's focus. Maybe not, maybe not Rhode Island, but don't you think what the Supreme Court decides and some of the major decisions that have gone on in education and health care, doesn't that factor into voters' minds? I, I do. I do think they factor in, and these aren't single-issue voters. In reproductive rights, that is an important topic for a lot of voters in Rhode Island and nationally. And we've seen how uh, political the Supreme Court has become, right? And the fact that rights are being taken, taken away from women uh, as a result of how politicized the Supreme Court is, I do think will get folks out uh, to vote. Yes, the economy is important to people and what their grocery tabs look like, but again, these aren't single-issue voters, although reproductive rights is at the top of that list, I believe. You get the final word. Okay. I mean, you mentioned bridges. I wonder if part of the calculus also is who's going to get us more money for the new bridge that we need. You know, being a blue state, potentially, having a de democratic administration, what we've been getting a lot of federal funding coming in. Is that going to change if you have a Republican? Yeah. Well, I, and that was the argument. Well, and John Chafee used that argument for years. It's, and he's a different kind of Republican than I think you have in a lot of Congress today. But he said it's always good to have somebody in the opposite party because it's going to shift, isn't it? And we mm -hmm. don't. And think of how much money John Chafee brought in over the yeah. years. Yeah, and, and, and you're 100% right. You have one party rule, you, nothing's ever going to get done. People get complacent, they get comfortable, and they don't actually make any, any real moves. They're just doing things that are going to work for them. All right. Well, what is getting done now in Washington? Well, well that's have, the, with yeah. the With the Democratic rule, you're right. I agree with you. Thank yeah. you. It's a <laughs> Republican-led House. Yeah, well, we'll see. And it's, it'll be interesting. That will be for another show, whether it's going to flip and how the Senate and the, and the House. Folks, even with Lively Extra, we don't have enough time. That is all the time we have. Joe and Antonia and uh, David, thank you for spending a little extra time. Come back here next week as the Lively Experiment continues.